Iberia in Pieces This is the title of the Crusader Kings 3 scenario set on the Iberian Peninsula, which tells the tale of a famous family drama from medieval Spain. In this scenario, you can choose between the three brothers Sancho, Alfonso and García, as well as their sister Urraca and their cousin Anso. This was where the Crusader Kings 2 tutorial was based, where you would control the King of León in an attempt to unite Iberia. But here, you can choose any of the protagonists in this medieval soap opera. So in this video, we will give a historical background on the struggle between the Jiménez siblings. The scenario is introduced by the following description. When the old king Ferdinand I passed away, his three sons all inherited a piece of his Iberian kingdom. Greed, ambition, and holy wars soon pushed the Iberian peninsula to boil, and the bonds between family members start to fray. So Ferdinand the Great of Leon was allegedly the first Spanish ruler to have himself crowned Emperor of Spain. But when he died in 1065, his sizable realm was split up between his three sons. Sancho, the oldest, who inherited the kingdom of Castilla, is described as follows. Sancho was cheated out of his full inheritance by his father's division of the land among all three brothers. A man of opportunity, he quickly took up arms against his brothers as soon as the peace started to crumble, but only briefly got to rule the reunited kingdom before he was assassinated. Then we have Alfonso, the middle son, who according to CK3, was his father's favourite, and inherited the rich middle kingdom of Leon. He moved on to outsmart and subjugate both his brothers, and he ruled over the reunited kingdom of his father. He is essentially our main character, the second son who in the end became the emperor. And as we'll see in this video, Alfonso VI, also named Alfonso the Brave, has significance for Spanish medieval history that far outreaches the victory over his two brothers. Finally, there is the youngest son, Garcia, who is introduced as follows. Given the most troubled kingdom of the three brothers, Garcia tried many extreme remedies to stabilise his rule. However, the fragile land was soon too tempting for his brother Alfonso, who invaded in 1071. In addition to the three brothers, you can also play as their sister Urraca, who according to CK3, received lordship over all the monasteries in the three kingdoms, and did not sit idly by as her brothers tore each other apart. In the game, she owns the county of Zamora as a vassal to Alfonso. One of her courtiers is another sister of theirs, known as Elvira. And playing a rather more minor role in this family drama is their cousin, the King of Navarra. In order to avoid confusion, it appears that Paradox used his Basque name, Anso, instead of his Spanish name, Sancho. You see, the Jiménez or Jimena dynasty was actually of Basque origin, which is even reflected in Anso's in-game culture. Whilst it is rather clumsy that he'd have such a fundamentally different culture than his first cousins west and east of him, it is a nice representation of the Basque ethnicity in the region. Anyway, Anso inherited the throne of Navarra at a young age after Ferdinand the Great killed his father. As is stated in his description in CK3, Anso fought and lost wars against his cousins just as his father had fought and lost wars against their father. But in the end, it was his own brother and sister who assassinated him. So, who was the man who kicked off this family drama when he himself kicked the bucket? Ferdinand I of Leon was born either as the second or even fourth son of his father Sancho III of Navarra, which might give one reason as to why his future second son Alfonso was his favourite. Ferdinand was a young teenager when his father made him Count of Castilla, after the previous Count of Castilla was assassinated by a plot of lower Castilian nobility. In this position, he was able to establish a power base and develop important leadership skills from an early age. After his father's death, he defeated his liege, the King of Leon, Bermudo III, and took the Leonese throne by right of his wife, Bermudo's sister Sancha. If killing your brother-in-law wasn't enough familial homicide for one story, he then started a war against his own brother, who had inherited his father's primary title, Garcia Sanchez III of Navarra. In the bloody battle of Atuerca, Ferdinand was triumphant once again. Garcia and his first son were killed, and after annexing some Navarrese territory, Ferdinand left his teenage nephew Adso in power of a vastly weakened Navarra, essentially reducing the kingdom to a Leonese puppet state. 
and this is the very answer that you can play as in the scenario. As we've seen, Ferdinand had five children, Orraca, Sancho, Alfonso, Garcia and Elvira, and contrary to his father, he had quite a big realm to divide up between his children. Hence, in 1064, a year before his death, he stated in his will that Sancho was to inherit Castilla, which was elevated to the rank of kingdom, Garcia was to inherit the newly founded kingdom of Galicia, and his two daughters should both inherit cities. Elvira got Toro and Orraca got Zamora. The primary title, however, the Kingdom of Leon, went to his middle son, Alfonso. Ferdinand died on Christmas Eve in 1065 upon returning to Leon from the Battle of Paterna, which he had won against the Muslim king of Valencia. His realm was split up according to his will, but his sons would soon find themselves in the same fraternal strife he had once had with his own brother. After his coronation as King of Leon in January 1066, Alfonso first had to confront the expansionist desires of Sancho, who, as the oldest brother, considered himself the sole legitimate heir of all the kingdoms of their father. Sancho was at first fighting against their cousins King Sancho IV of Navarra, remember little Anso, and Sancho Ramirez of Aragon, in what was called rather aptly, the War of the Three Sanchos. But when their mother, Queen Sancha, died in 1067, the conflict between the brothers finally came to the open. Sancho first attacked Alfonso in late 1067, and won at the Battle of Yantada, though not decisively enough to depose Alfonso as King of Leon. Instead, the two decided to join forces against their youngest brother, Garcia, and seize his kingdom, in the usual way that older siblings tend to bully the younger and more naive sibling. With Alfonso's complicity, Sancho invaded Galicia in 1071, defeating and imprisoning Garcia. This is one moment Paradox gets wrong, as it states in the scenario that it was Alfonso who invaded Galicia, when historical records say it was Sancho. Anyway, the two brothers titled themselves as Dual Kings of Galicia and signed a truce, and they lived happily ever after. Until less than a year later when Sancho and Alfonso once again went to war. They fought at the Battle of Golpeyera, which again saw Sancho victorious. Alfonso was imprisoned and transferred to a monastery, where he was forced into a life as a cleric, shaving his head and taking the cloth. This is where their willful sister Orraca intervened. She convinced Sancho to allow his brother to take refuge in the Muslim-controlled city of Toledo, which was ruled by a Muslim vassal, Toleon. From there, Alfonso schemed to oust his brother once and for all. When Sancho actually besieged Zamora to end his sister's disobedience, a Leonese nobleman called Beiro Dorfos betrayed and killed Sancho during the siege. This violent death of Sancho, who had no descendants, as well as the Leonese nobility's support, allowed Alfonso to reclaim his throne. Now, the ambitious Alfonso controlled Leon, Castilla and Galicia, succeeding in the struggle to reunite his father's kingdom. Interestingly, one of Sancho's knights was the famous mercenary warlord Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, in Spanish medieval history well known as El Cid. It is fantastic that Paradox includes this famous warrior in the game as one of Sancho's knights, and just look at those stats. To this day, El Cid remains a popular Spanish folk hero and national icon, with his story remembered in popular culture. Mi nombre es Rodrigo Díaz. Nací en Vivar. Mi padre murió luchando por Fernando I. At this point of the story, El Cid's most famous adventures in Spain's Reconquista still lay ahead of him, as he was still quite young in 1072. But according to legend, he forced Alfonso to take an oath multiple times that he had not been involved in the scheme to murder Sancho. Whether or not Alfonso had been involved, after reuniting his father's lands, he steadily ruled the kingdom for another 37 years before his death in 1109, during which he retook the historic Spanish capital of Toledo from Muslim rule. This paved the way for both Castilian domination of Spain, as well as the gradual expulsion of Islam from the Iberian Peninsula. I believe one can see why this story is so accurately depicted in Crusader Kings. It simply incorporates all the typical game dynamics Crusader Kings can offer. Annoying inheritance laws, brotherly feuds, frustratingly indecisive battles, murderous schemes and divisive factions. So if you haven't yet, give this scenario a go, and let us know in the comments what you think about the depiction of the murderous medieval drama of the Jimenez dynasty. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to History in Bits.